Hello. I want to teach you how to felt a fish today. You have your pattern piece, hopefully cut out. This is where we start. Trace your pattern piece onto your material. Cut it out. Lay it. I just have a little lunch tray that was donated to me by a no longer hungry person, I suppose. And anyway, this just helps to contain the mess a little bit. I have a drink bottle here with some little holes drilled in the lid. That's what I use to put my water on. And I'm using my fiber. And let's get started. I just have this sponge here to soak up some of the water so that it doesn't get out of hand if I get a little over enthusiastic. Okay, so if you've worked with wool before, this won't be new to you, but if you have it, the way you get the wool off, you don't want to grab it hard and try to pull it apart. Oh my God, that's too much. But you will pull gently on the wispy ends and then lay those bits down. And we're going to lay our fiber out for the first layer all in one direction. It doesn't have to be super thick. You don't want to use all of your fiber up in one layer or even on one side. You should have plenty of fiber even left over after you're done. Okay, so that is plenty of fiber for this side. Now we're going to do the same thing, only do crossways. And we're fortunate that this fiber is long enough pretty much to cover that whole pattern the wide way. If it's not long enough, then just add a little bit, you know, just layer it over like that. You still see, we're doing little wispy bits. We're not doing big old gummy chunks, okay? All right, so that's layer two. One going this way with layer one. This is layer two. And now we're going to do layer, what, anyone, three. Okay. And we're just going to lay this over just like we did the last layer. Only going at right angles to the last layer. And we're just going to cover it all up so we don't have any holes. And you can kind of feel if it's, all thick enough. So now, those are our three layers. Three, count them. All right. And so here's my water. It's hot water. As hot as you can stand it. Or just warm. But hot's good. And it has about an eighth of a teaspoon of liquid soap in it. Ivory works. Murphy's oil soap is good. I find that to be hard on my skin. I actually, I think I'm using Dawn or something, which I know that's detergent, but for the for doing something small, it's not a big deal. You want something that's going to create an alkaline environment for your fibers. Now I'm pushing the water all the way down and through. Here comes the air bubble. See that air bubble working its way up? You don't want air between, you want all your fibers to be wet. You don't want air between any of the fibers. You want it all saturated. But you see, I didn't put the whole bottle on. I only used about a quarter of a cup, maybe. Okay, so now I'm going to carefully lift this edge. I can do it here so you can see it. Lift the edge and find my pattern and pick it up and just lightly flip it over. And then if it's not totally centered, and please excuse the appearance of my pattern. I've used it a number of times, and I cut it a couple of times, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay. And if you've ever seen any other felting videos, you'll notice I don't have all the foolish equipment that everybody else uses. I don't find it necessary. Just your pattern, your wool, a tray, or if you don't care if water gets everywhere, just a surface to felt on and you're good. All right, so now I'm going to fold the edges up over my pattern, being careful not to create folds. You're going to ease it in, just like if you were easing a ruffle onto something. See how it's, it's it want, you, you can just get a big old fold there, but it tends to not felt as well. You want to ease those fibers together. And then once you get it all folded over, just kind of monkey with it. I'm good at monkeying with things. 
So monkey with it a little bit and get any folds out and just make sure that it's around up against the edges of your pattern. That's the reason I like using this uh, packing foam is because you can feel it inside your wool. You don't have to guess about where it is. You know where it is at all times. You know where your pattern is? Okay, so now we're going to do that same process again on this side. See we have a hole in the middle? It's okay. These are fibers going to overlap and that'll be the thinnest point, but it's okay to have a thin point. All right, this is not a utilitarian fish unless you're going to make a handbag. Doesn't matter if it's really thick. It can you don't want holes in it, but it doesn't have to be like super thick, okay? Cuz this is more of an ornament. All right, here we go. So now we're going to do the process again. Ooh, doo -doo. Laying out the wool, laying out the wool, laying out the wool. All right, layer one. Up, oh, I'm switching it up, going from left to right instead of right to left. Two, three. See if I don't have to take a long time showing you, I can do it up pretty quick. All right all the way to the end. All right, here comes the water again. Okay, yep, we're about half done. Whoop. About half done with the water. All right, now again, you're going to push through to push the air out from between the fibers. All right, and do it again, flip it over, and you can see we have a beautifully encased, ooh, isn't that pretty? Just, ooh, it's almost sexy, it's so pretty. Okay, now we're gonna fold this over again. And we go all the way around. Okay, there. Now, all perfectly encased. It's not felted yet, so you have to be careful if you're going to handle it. All right, now we're going to put on our fins and our eyeballs. Get a bit of your white, if you want. You don't have to. You can just sew beads or buttons on for eyes and just call it good. But I like to have a little bit of contrast, and so I'm going to pull out just one wisp then how heavy you want your eyes. See, that was just one wisp. I pulled it in half, and now I'm going to grab the wispy end, and I'm going to loosely wrap it around my finger, all the way around, so then I have this beautiful wool ring. Isn't it lovely? Okay, now I'm going to just slide it off, and it stays a ring if you're careful, and I'm just going to place it. You can put a little water on it. And mush it down with your finger. Just lightly mush it. Not a big deal. Okay. All right. Now that's that eye. You don't want to do both sides because you'll and you'll see why. Because we're going to felt one side and then we're going to turn it over and do the other side. Okay. So now, here's my contrasting fiber. I'm going to use this because it's easy for you to see when I've. I hope so anyway that I've done something different. Okay. Get the other eye out of the way. And that part. And now we'll take a wisp out and the part that I'm grabbing I'm going to put down on the back because that, that get I have a nice idea about how thick that is. And then just tap it in because the water that's already there should be sufficient. Okay and I'm going to do the same thing with the tail. See? Grab, place, pull in place. And you can have the tail as thick as you want. You don't have to have it real thick. And then pat it down. All right. All right. Now you can take a piece of your pattern that's left over when you've cut the circle out of the rectangle or when you've cut your oval out of the rectangle. You have a little bit left. So I just cut this little odd shape. Just cut a piece so that you can place it on the, for the pectoral fin. 
and decide where you want that fin to be and then pull off again a wisp and the part that you pulled for you pulled just set it right up there and the end of it goes over see over that and then you just place it in the gill is going to be here and so you want the gill behind the eye and the pectoral fin behind the gill okay now you're going to take this little bit here and fold it over and touch it down and that way you've got your beautiful pectoral fin now ah! pectoral fin yeah that's a pex yeah okay and now we're going to have our other fin <laughs> This one that's back here, the Lala fin. I can't remember what it's called, so just call it the Lala fin, because <sighs> I'm in La La Land. Okay, so now wet all of this on this side. All right, now you're going to start felting. Simple as that. Here we go. You're going to start tapping, tap, 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 all the way around. This is nice, good quality merino fiber and so it shouldn't take too long for it to felt so I'm going to do this because sometimes it takes about 20 minutes to do this part so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for a minute get this felted and then I'll come right back and see you in a minute